So let's start with number 25. 25, we're going for Bernd Leno. Now, Bernd Leno has had a solid career. Solid career. He, I've got sort of like Brad Friedel vibes, which mm. some people were going, how dare you say that about Brad Friedel? Because he maybe had a better career than Bernd Leno. But he, Bernd Leno was like collateral damage a little bit. He's done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Uh, signed him in 1819 for 22 and a half million. Um, and adjusted for inflation, James. That's Sorry to say it. Right. <laughs> so let's talk about this. Right. Let's talk about the Excel spreadsheet, guys. This is important. I know you just heard the word Excel spreadsheet. Stay with us because this is wild. Ooh. And if I may, can we put it in the description? You can do whatever you like. Yeah. So, so I said to Alex, can you do this? He was like, I thought, he, you know, you might not really fancy it. Super keen. <laughs> and then he goes, oh, I'll get it to you a bit later on. And then I see this majestic Excel spreadsheet Color that coded. has player, season signed, transfer fee, adjusted for inflation, brackets Bank of England, <laughs> end of 23. <laughs> goals, uh, goals and assists per minute, uh, appearances, years at the club and notes. To return to Burnt, to Burned. I think this is something that we're going to come back a lot to on, on this podcast is how you start and how you finish. And like, for example, someone like a Granite Xhaka, genuinely, uh, that last year has put him, it, it's catapulted that is, him up Yeah, that's such a shout. You chop that off. You cut off that last year. He, he might not, be in is some, he in this list? He might be in some people's worst signs, yeah. but he's in my best sign. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's how you start and how you finish. And I think with Leno, because he was kind of pushed out by, well, not pushed out, actually, part of the, one of the greatest ripple effects yeah. of all time of the Lionel Messi if, if, if anything maybe that makes him the best signing um, or obviously the ripple effect of you know Martinez getting in and so on and so forth with Messi winning the, the World Cup which is important to pick up uh, because uh, if if you think I don't know that I know it now mm-hmm. don't send it to me yeah, so I've James, been sending no. send it so many times now <laughs> I know, I know Ronaldinho. I know Beckham could have gone to Barcelona. I know that could have been different. You okay. see, that 16-year-old that plays darts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember one game we had, and Arsenal fans will remember this, we had a game against Watford where we conceded 30 shots. Hashtag Emery Ball. <laughs> Burned Leno was unbelievable. So, And I think the problem is because we weren't very good in that period, people look back on him and go, oh, you know, he was all right. You know, yeah. but he was, he's, he's, he's below Martinez, he's below Ramsdale, he's below you know, whatever you think of those players. But actually, I think if you look at his time at Arsenal as an overall really solid signing, wasn't on crazy wages, we sold him for way too cheap, and he's doing pretty well at Fulham. So I, I like the signing. Okay. Ramsdale is on the list. He's on the list. He's on the plane. He's above <laughs> Bernd Leno. <laughs> Interesting as well, I would say, I reckon if you ask most people, um, you guys obviously are listening right now, how many games did you think he played for Arsenal? I think a lot of people would say 70. I was thinking something like that. 125 games. It's quite a lot. Ramsdale? More. No, no. Oh, no, 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 sorry, no, no, no. Sorry. That's more than I thought. It's a lot more than yeah. I thought. I think, do you know what he got? He got Joe Hearted. Yes. <laughs> Didn't he? And then Ramsdale got Joe Hearted. Ramsdale got Joe Hearted. Will David Ryan be Joe Hearted? That's <laughs> okay, yeah. At what point do you stop getting Joe Hearted? <laughs> I said, like, surely, like, Ray is like, that's his, that's his thing, isn't it? Yeah. So surely he cannot be. Yeah, He's unheartedable. Uh, okay, 25th spot. Well, we spoke about him earlier. Oh, sorry, 24th. Sorry, so 24th. The, sorry, I've got my numbers the, wrong. No, no, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Um, Granite Xhaka. Granite Xhaka. Again, I think has been put up this list because of his last year at the club, which was amazing. I'm, I'm not taking that away from him. But I think if you look at, you know, 45 million when adjusted for inflation, that's probably, that. you know, that's, and it was a 35 million pound fee in 2016. Just for ease, let's just go with let's the just, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I picked up that energy. <laughs> I picked, wordlessly picked up that energy and I was going to pivot to that, but I appreciate you bringing that out in the uh, in the open. Um, yeah, 35. 35. Just Stop it. Bit. Hey, Al, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. <laughs> and a little bit more if it's inflation. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what inflation is. So, so right. yeah, Go yeah 35 million in 2016. You know, again, you know, it's comparatively to, to midfielders at the time. Seven years at the club, 297 appearances. You know, he was, he was a good midfielder, but I, we have to look at the totality of the situation he had a lot of years where, in fairness, and I actually love this, Wenger, when he first signed him, said his best qualities come as a box-to-box midfielder. And he was played as a deep-line playmaker. He was played as a, like a dropping in as a third centre-back at points for a lot of his career. So I think Xhaka was, again, similar to I think the way we'll look at a lot of United players in the future, bit of a victim of turmoil, as a lot of these players might be. I think he's a better player and showed that when he's, when he's put in his best position, he's a good player, and therefore I put him in my signing list. But the limitation on going upwards is, you know, the guy 
threw off the captain's armband, threw mm. it, you know, told the fans to F off and so yeah. on. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot of games, 297. Like, it's interesting, actually, on this list, a lot of players who, who are in that sort of 230 to 300 club. Um, and again, yeah, I think that's... If you swap around his the, the quality of his career mm-hmm. at Arsenal and you take the last season, you pop it at the start yep. and make it the other way around, yeah. he's not on this list, is he? Probably not. So should yeah. he should he even be on this? List? <laughs> uh, moving on. Uh, no, yeah, no. It's, it's... So maybe that's that's why it's fair where he is, right? I, what I'll be intrigued to know if anyone uh, uh, thinks that Granit Xhaka, as we go through the list, should be higher than any of the other people on this list. I suppose it depends on yeah what you think of the remaining twenty three. But I, for me, he, I think he was so brilliant in that last season. Had such a he brilliant, was so turn- brilliant. So, had such a brilliant turnaround, and also. I quite like the guy, and I know that's not particularly objective, but I liked. I liked. He was such a professional, brought so much to the. Um, you know, everyone said how professional this guy was, and how 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 much he cared. Do you, mm. know what I mean? do, you do you think how well he's doing it by Leverkusen now? Does that Don't shine talk. help <laughs> in it's terms possible. of him on the list as well? It's possible. Yeah, if he went to you know, if he went to another club and wasn't doing so well, it's 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 very possible. But I th- I think what all he's doing is showing in the right system. And there's a brilliant system about by Leverkusen that uh, James Rowe was on about yeah, recently. Yeah. Um, uh, but in that system, he's showing what he can be. And again, so, you know, I don't think we can do... It wasn't Paul, was it? It was the other guy. If bought some maybes. But um, I think we can we can say, yes, maybe there's another world where he is up further up or down, but we're in this world. And I think he's, he's 24th for me. Okay. Next up is... And some people aren't going to like this, James. Really? I think Declan Rice is the 23rd pick for me. Okay. I think some people will say, how on earth can you have him on the list? Some people will say he should be way higher. As I say, in terms of best players I've seen at the Emirates playing for Arsenal, he's probably already in my top 10. Really? He is... West Ham fans, I'm sorry, we should have listened to you. He's that good. He, <laughs> yeah. he is an unbelievable footballer. So he's probably already in my top 10 in terms of, you know, you don't... okay. You know, one game is, is too much, but he's had a six month sample. What he's achieved in that achieved, what he's played at in that sample. I don't want to use the word achieved. What he's played at. <laughs> <Stay> <laughs> <nervous>. <laughs> I love it. Please, sorry, sorry, you Come on, say me, Jess. Yes. Um, uh, what he's uh, uh, played at, the level he's played at in the six months, shows me he is an unbelievable footballer. But, and this is a limitation on some players later, if I sign you, I, Tim Lewis, if Richard Garlick, so on, sign you for £105 million. Pounds, Yes. You can 100% be in my top players list because you're probably that good. That's not an amazing signing. It's also, you know, he was one of the best players in the Premier League last season. It's a pretty obvious signing. He's on massive wages. It's not to take, he, sh- he deserves that. Yeah. He's cost that. I would have paid more for him. But for me, that limits in terms of signing until he goes and achieves something with the club, that limits where he can be on the signing list. Yeah. Do you know what? That will hurt him in lists forever. With yeah. The signing. The, like the and amount Declan of money. Somewhere I listen to this thinking, oh, that guy from the different knock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God. I didn't pay it. I didn't pay it. I'm just coming and played. But I think the fact that when no one's bothered about the transfer fee, again, shows yes. you how well he's done. But as yes. we will get to on this list, and uh, yeah, there's there's a name that's screaming out as I look at it, and I'm thinking, well, especially when I saw how much you got him for yeah. and how much he's worth now. Yeah. I was just like. Wow. And yep. so on this list, when it's about the signing, the signings, yep. I think you're absolutely right in yep. terms of where you've put him. What I would say is, again, paying homage to Paul's list, um, you have <laughs> created little sections and you have top three, you've got top 10, you've got good signing and you've got... Just it, a signing. We, just a sign. Well, just a footballer. <laughs> just, just a, a footballer. footballer <laughs> so you are currently suggesting that Declan Rice is just a footballer. I'm saying he's just a signing. <laughs> don't you dare misquote me problem is you're stuck you're stuck with when you're doing the list right now with Declan Rice yes so because you, exactly. you could what you could do if you really wanted the clip is you go boom and you plonk him there and you go under Declan Rice this team will win every single competition oh, that's there let me, let me and then clear. you just wait you just wait you <laughs> pop that in the fridge and you wait clip me up where am I there yeah uh, with Declan Rice in the team, Arsenal will win in the next three years a Premier League or Champions League. I, I'm so sure. Thank you. That's all I wanted. There you go. <laughs> Merry Christmas. But, and, and when that happens, up he goes. Up he goes. Okay. And, and also you said something really, really interesting. 
the hundred the the hundred million pound club or like the players in that. So let's say eighty million and above. How many times do we hear about Jack Grealish hundred million pounds? Moses Caicedo, what the, the money he paid for him? Yeah, even Pogba's or whatever. I can't. Uh, maybe I'm just in the wrong spaces, but are many people talking about Rice's price tag? And no, sometimes people the ab- go. absence, absence, the absence of a conversation can also be a compliment, I think. And the shadow of the money is a problem these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha- I mean, how long ago did Harry Maguire go to Man United? But still, like, people still yeah. chucking that at him. Exactly. Um, hundred. Write this down, guy. Hundred million pound players and the ripple effects of those players. We'll do that for a later podcast. <laughs> okay. Uh, right, he's back. He's Second back. goalkeeper. Mr. Ramsdale is 22nd for me. Um, a really, really good signing. I think um, I can, the last time I was on here, I got, I think the kids say, cooked for a couple of my, <laughs> a couple of my valuations. Um, that is what the kids say, James. I am yeah, down with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but look, I think if you look at, if you look at prospects, goalkeeping prospects, and I'm saying 25 and under, in the world, I challenge you to name me two or three more better than that. Is that, that what you got cooked on? No, no, no. Would I got cooked, cooked on my valuation. Do you want right. to say it again? Uh, <laughs> I got cooked about saying he could go for 60, 70 million pounds. I also got cooked for a Tommy Asu take, which by the way, I, I do apologize for. I was, I was, I don't know what happened that you day. Too uh, I was too bold. 45 okay. um, mil. I think, yeah, I think with Tommy Asu, just, just, um, yeah, we'll come, we'll come to Tommy Asu. But Tommy yeah, Asu is on the list as well. He is on the list. Um, but yeah, with Ramsdale, I think if you sell him, and again, when you say he could go for this money, you're saying in the best possible case scenario, and so many things have to happen for that to happen. So, Say, for example, Newcastle get in a new manager and decide to move on from Pope. How much in the summer is a guy with, I think it's three years, it could be four years left on his deal, future England number one, probably one of the best goalkeeping prospects in the world, Premier League proven. Like, how much is that worth to, well, to a Newcastle? That's so, 60, 70 million pounds. Yeah, transfer market, their value of him is 40 million euros. Oh, sorry, sorry, that's been his highest market value. His current market value is 28 which is yeah, which is interesting. So like quite a severe drop off, obviously from from that forty. Um, and when you got him, obviously the mar- I mean you got him for thirty, but obviously you, you know there's going to be years where you're going to get to use yep. him. I'd be amazed. I mean, Kai, what do you think? I I re- so his contract's up in twenty twenty six. It's a safe bet to to put him in as a solid kind of piece of work because you're you're not gonna you're not gonna sell him for less than thirty, are you? No, there's no reason With, to. There's absolutely no reason to. I mean, he won't depreciate. Yeah, I, and I guess you know you don't want him to rot in, in the reserves or whatever. But no. he'll want to go. Yeah, I, and, and that t- will facilitate it, right? He 100 percent could go for 30, 40 million pounds, right? That 100 percent. But I'm saying in, in the right situation, you could get really good money. Alisson was 66 million pounds in 2018. And Alisson, I'm not comparing the players, but I'm saying you know a, a goalkeeper can go for that kind of money. In the I would, right situation. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. Uh, what I would say is, and again, you might get cooked for that one by the Liverpool fans. So Liverpool fans, just take a breath. No, they're, that's not they're what not he's as good. <laughs> he's not, he's not saying good. that. Can't even get in the team. The, uh, but uh, the other thing I would say is that the landscape now, I, I'm quite enjoying the lack of transfer news because no one's got the money. Why have they not got the money? I'm sorry, as I speak to the Everton fan, but you haven't got the money because you've spent lots of yeah, money. Yeah. Okay, so we're calming all that down now. I know it's very sensible, but that would lead to you yeah. not being able to have as much money to spend on a goalkeeper as well. Yeah. That would be an interesting ripple effect of financial fair play mm-hmm. is that often you pay more for a striker than you do for other positions and it kind of, as you go back, it's less and less. I wonder if goalkeepers get quite heavily hit within that. I still don't see him going for less than you bought him or anything you know, like severely bad. So yep. I think it's it's kind of a net even, isn't it? Which is a shame, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Re- really good signing. Um, I think, you know, in terms of the level that moving from a different style of goalkeeper to another goalkeeper, that was a great step up. Uh, he's limited because of what's happened since. But I think overall, we can put it on the good signing list and say, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's in the top 25, I think. Okay. Next up. Next up. I was surprised by this, James. Guess who has the best goal and assist ratio in the Emirates era? It, you can see the name. It's <laughs> yeah, can, I, can I guess? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think better, I know. better than actually, okay, yeah. So better than Abamian, better than Özil, better than uh, Alexis Sanchez, better than Martinelli, better than Alexis Sanchez. Yeah, that is Lucas wild. Podolski. That's crazy. Lucas Podolski, ten million pounds, came in. Uh, yeah, goal and assist ratio every 95 minutes. Now, Podolski had a lot of limitations to his game. He was, he, I think he was pretty 
he was very one footed. He was defensively, he was completely. You would you would struggle to play Podolski and Walcott at the same time. You would never do that. So there were certain things he couldn't do. But in terms of ball striking off his left foot, we've that's elite. That's you know if we're talking about superpowers of a yeah. player, what can what what is the one thing that player can do the best, better than anyone? What got them to that level? His his ball striking off his left foot was unbelievable. So he can't get much higher. But for ten million pounds to come in and score at that rate. Make 82 appearances, be there for three years, be a best goal assist ratio. I think he's on the list. Is his goals per minute down to, is it sort of, bit of a, a Jota thing? Where oh, yeah, 100%. Not, yeah, he's not 100%. getting those starts. It, it was a bit of an odd one. With it. I don't know how many caps he got for for Germany, yeah, but it, I remember, because he only had that quite, they're quite good, um, Germany, in terms of like the saying, saying goodbye yeah. to their players. And I think they did that with him and he had a lot of caps for Germany. Yeah. Loads of caps for Germany. He had a good career, went to Bayern. But they, he was a bit, into Milan. he confused me a bit. He was definitely a like he's good, but is he good kind of player? Because, like you say, the stats are all there. Got a yeah, bit of a ripple yeah. with him. Hundred and thirty. Go on. So Podolski joined Bayern in two thousand and six, but his potential destinations could have changed everything. That's right, Kai's back <laughs> after a stellar few years at Köln. Podolski earned a move to Bayern Munich. However, the other clubs who wanted him were Liverpool and Real Madrid. At the time, he was a hybrid left wing, left winger and striker. He had gone. Had he gone to Real Madrid, for example, he would have been competing with a place in the team with Rubinho. Had he managed to displace Rubinho, Rubinho may have left earlier than he actually did, which, of course, was two-man City. It was the first marquee signing, you'll remember. Now, this would have meant that in 2008, Rubinho wouldn't have been available for Man City. And therefore, Ronaldinho, who also moved in 2008, could well have been Man City's Rubinho. But, it, of course, it never happened. So, Podolski, thanks. You robbed the world of Ronaldinho in the Premier League. Haven't it? <laughs> Ronaldinho cost see... half as much as Robinho. He would have cost half as much? He cost 16 million. Robinho was 28. Really? Mm. Did you see that documentary about Pep on the BBC the other day? Amazing. And I love the bit where they were talking about Ronaldinho and him, he was just going out playing bongos every night. You... Loved it. I heard that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, right? And I was like... He Imagine. wasn't just playing bongos, no, no, I'm telling no, no, no. you. Not, yeah. Unless that's a euphemism for something else. But I just can't, I can't imagine Pep Guardiola coming in and playing the bongos on my own. Yeah, yeah. It's It's amazing that, like, yeah, that he sort of made that move. It would have been interesting to see how he would have come in. Because I, I think, actually, in terms of uh, Rubinho and uh, his partying, then it would have been quite similar in terms of going to Man City. So there would have been that much. Maybe maybe the sort of the ripple effect once he's through the door might mm. not be as severe. But what you will not have, what you will not have, <laughs> is the meme of that. When um, he's licking uh, his oh lips. My God. And that makes it worth it. And that yeah. makes it worth it. You can see that lick of the lips exclusively on Spotify. <laughs> Make sure you give us a five star rate. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, Podolski, shame on you. You cost us. You cost us so big. Have we lost Car- Rubinho, Ronaldinho, Podolski? Have we lost the characters in the game, James? I mean, and, uh, I mean, I think isn't Rubinho. I, 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 sadly, we lose track of of who gets um, stardust gets in trouble for certain misdemeanors. Oh, yeah. You know these guys. Yes, yeah, so Rubinho's bad egg. Rubinho's a bad egg, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to talk about Carl Walker's recent thing, but he yeah, said yeah. it himself. Like, <laughs> do you know, in terms of in terms of adultery, like that, yeah. everyone's fine. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Check. Um, but yeah, I, th- look, I think the game itself that is definitely a, a that is a concern. I think in terms of those characters, right down. I think on a, on a human level, I think we've still we're seeing more of of people's sort of vulnerabilities and things like that, and I think that's a real positive. But on the pitch itself, I think yeah, I think we Just are a little bit lost. A bit. I, I understand why it's happened because to beat the Not Peps and the Arte, you know, you have to sort of make this system first teams. But I do miss the Kakas and I miss the Ronaldo, yeah. the Decos, these guys, you know. I, yeah, I do think, do you, we did a video at the start of the year with um, Cormac from Football Meta. And one thing that me and Kai discussed before that kind of put it forward to Cormac was that I think the 10, I think that guy is coming back. I think that guy's Madison in a team that keeps the ball and he goes where he wants and kind of solves some some things when you haven't got everyone who's at Madison's level. You go and mm. give Madison that free reign. I think there could be more and more of that as time time goes on with certain teams. Yeah. So we live in hope, hopefully. <laughs> but I also think physicality is going to like go through the roof again as well. Mm-hmm. I think that's the other side mm-hmm. of it. Let's get back to the list, shall we? The next up. Oh. 22nd is... <laughs> is it 22nd? Dremond, I remember next. This player, it said... Uh, so was no, yeah, twentieth. Sorry, apologies. You're right. This player 
it was trending and it said, he's 28. The, 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 the <laughs> phrase, he's 28, oh, was no. trending. I love that phrase. Uh, and of course it is. It's Leandro Trossard. It is. Um, again, another really good goal and assist ratio. Uh, not to put, make it all about that, but 109. Again. I think that's important with him. Yeah. I think that's important with him with his ranking because I think he's um, he's quite a sweet player that that will that makes him sort of less memorable and yeah. I think sometimes hurts him in terms of being an, a starter. Mm-hmm. I think if he's got a bit more of an ego, he might make people a little more uncomfortable. He might actually be a bit more important at times. I think he kind right. of just sort of flows about and and yeah because of the because of the versatility you know he could, he could play nine he could play on the right he could play on the left he could he could go into midfield he's a victim of that i think a little yeah. bit well okay i guess that's the question is he a victim of that or if he was just um as good as he is in that one position mm. would he still be at brighton probably yeah you don't yeah. think he would have got that move? i think from an arteta perspective he is the perfect 12 to 15 player do you know what i mean in yeah. terms, you know that that's yeah. one, one of the first subs someone who comes in who can who can contribute in so many different ways so good technically, ball striking excellent. He's one of our only players that actually shoots from outside the box. Um, really good professional from by all accounts. Looks knackered all the time. Yeah, he does it tie. Yeah. Knackered. He's got that Simicast <laughs> thing going on, doesn't really he? Really looks sleepy. He looks shattered. Um, yeah, bless him. But yeah, I think he's a good signing, good price for, for what we got him for in, in January last year. Good player. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I like, I'm liking this list so far. I think this is good. And I think that's a brave one with Trossard because you I think you could kind of like sneak that down if you wanted to. No. Um and also I, I guess you dodged Mudrick as well with that. Yes, although I think Does that give him I a think, bump. I think Mudrik under Arteta would be having a very different conversation. Yeah. It's all about environments, and if yeah. if he was taught to slow down, speed up in the way Martinelli's been taught, different conversation. So good. <laughs> I like, in my head, I just like training. It's like it's going right. So I've got a whistle here. When I blow it, I want you to slow <laughs> down and then, okay. and then go cook again. That's why I keep saying Samstrom. The uh, yeah. Do you know what? The, you know the link between Arsenal and Chelsea is is quite well trodden now. I was going to say. I nearly put Jorginho on this list. The more Jorginho plays for Arsenal, the more I'm like, 12 million for Jorginho. I'm not saying, again, it doesn't make my best players in the Emirates era, but as a signing, it's a really good signing. I'd love to know more about Jorginho in terms of like his kind of influence within the group, because I think you're kind of, mm. I imagine he's not like Xhaka level. Like intensity and things like that, but you would hope he was bringing something kind of to the yeah. party when it comes to that. And so for certain games, like St James's Park away last season, Jorginho was unbelievable because he just he can control the ball in the first phase and just you can't get it off him. He's unbelievable in the right when he's not being pressed properly and he's he's got a bit of time and space. He can he can do stuff for you. Man. There's someone I've just realised there's someone missing on your list. Who? I might have them in the nearly men below. I don't think he is. Oh, uh, who? Who? Who was oh, that? I've no, also, I haven't got Thierry Henry on loan, by the way, just to be, just to be absolutely <laughs> clear. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll save it. I'll save okay, it. Okay, I'm excited. About this. I don't this. think you would miss it, so I think you've made a decision here. Okay, okay, okay. But I'm, my mind's blown a little bit. Next up, again, get ready to get your mind blown. Number 19, <laughs> Mr. Bobby Holding. You sure? I am sure. I'm sorry you didn't cost £50 million. Pounds. <laughs> £3 million pounds okay. for a centre-back who comes in and performs at mostly a top four level. That's still um, under four million after inflation. <laughs> We're not meant to mention that. <laughs> Sporadically, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, sprinkling. Seven years at the club, 162 appearances. I think, look, are you going to get better? Uh, is he the best player in the world? Again, no. But for the price. Right 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 is not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's best easy. hair transplant the Premier League's ever seen? The best comeback in ever. Wild. Um, so good. Absolutely. I showed my family. That's how good it was. <laughs> guys, guys, come in here. <laughs> no, I and it was, wasn't loading. I was like, no, no, trust me. It's really, really good. <laughs> no, it's, worth it, it's, worth it, it's worth it. I hate that. You know, you think it's good, yeah. but like the moment's kind of gone yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah horrible. <laughs> um, no, I... I and again, you know, I appreciate this is my subjective thing, but good for the vibes, good professional. Gave us that moment with the Dharma Troy. He built like a brick. Was like, oh, no, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Moments like that. Just seems like a great dude. Three million pounds. Never caused a problem when he was out of the team. Really good signing. Really yeah. good signing. Yeah. Not having I, it. I'm struggling with this one a little bit. I you think, do you know, I think what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think ultimately with him, regardless of the price, he was never. And he seems like a really nice guy, but for what you want and where you want to get to, Roy he's just no way near he's the nice level. Guy. <laughs> he's a nice, yeah, he's a great, great lad. He's not. He's just not. He's not at the level. And your own fans have repeatedly said that. Yeah, he can't get a game for Crystal Palace. Well, and and you guys hammered him 
Like as much as it was yeah. Saliba's fault for getting injured, it was obviously more. It was more yeah. the fact that Rob Holding had to play football. This seems that. harsh. So, which I think is harsh, but I also think that means why I, I'm surprised you've you've got him on yeah. the left again. Starts and ends. I think if you if we if we if he finished in 2017 after that FA Cup final, everyone's going, "What an unbelievable player!" But it starts and ends, and it's and it's at the end he's going to be remembered for coming in and basically. Being the problem in the title race, and and and, and, and the Sun, uh, the but it's North London derby. It's not it. his, I and mean, that was just ridiculous. It's not he shouldn't have been put in that position. He, he just sh- he just shouldn't. I'm not. I know. agree with you, and therefore he shouldn't be in nineteenth. Well, you're gonna it's hate my opinion. You're gonna hate my number eighteenth. It's Mohamed El Nenny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, good luck. Five million pounds. Um, <laughs> just imagining all. The, Five million pounds. You can't see this, but uh, um, I was scurrying across yeah. the Excel spreadsheet trying to find um, something. Uh, um, uh, why you've Why you've got, him there? Why J- got him there? Why have you got him there? I have to trust my instinct. I think sometimes on these list things, what happens is people people do the list, and then they get challenged on it, and then they dig their heels in. And no, that's, I could, that's what you're. That's I your could, job. That's my job. I could be persuaded to kick El a little bit further down and push someone else further up, similar to Rob Holding. Okay. Whilst we're on this. Uh, Shall I say the person I'm, I want him I in my twenty five? You've not Go got on. in here. Go on. Where's Thomas Partey? <laughs> yeah. Where's Thomas Partey, Alex? The problem with the Partey thing. <laughs> yeah, is there a whole sub story there? I you just don't, want to, don't want to go near it. No, I get it. And I get do you know what? And does it make the list right? No. Does it make people like you more? I think yes. I just don't want to go near it. I get that. I don't want to go near I it. I don't it. think many Arsenal fans want to go near it. No. And I hope one day. We know we can all know what happened. Yes, I. Hate that's you. what I, hate I want. You. That's what, and I hope everyone heals. On on yeah 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 on a sort of footballing scenario, he kind of needs to be in there somewhere. But I, look, I'm I'm fine with him being not being on the list. Okay, said. Uh, but El Nenny should not be that. <laughs> that's madness. Yeah, I could I could. Okay, so I've got some nearly men down here. Can I throw some names out? Jacka beneath El Nenny. That's more to do with value, and to, on, honestly, El Nenny again. And, and this, is, this is my subjective thing. I'm I'm much more look at value, and then he low wages, great professional, has never cost us. He's ne- he's not got us to the next level, but he's ne- Rob Holding and Jacker have cost us sometimes. Right, El Nenny's never cost us anything. Yeah, wildly limited though. <laughs> and he- honestly, if you, again, if, if he's not at your club still, yeah. You'd be happy uh, to throw him under the bus. He's nearly been here for ten years, and he's always filled in. He's I've never I've, El Nenny has never come in, and I've gone, oh my god, this is the next coming. But equally, he's never come in, and I've gone, oh god, Actually, never. That's, that's <laughs> there was periods where he was, but but yeah. there, I, he's never come in, and I've gone, we've lost this game because of Mohamed El Nenny. There have been periods where Granite Xhaka and Rob Holding okay. have lost us the game. But I, I bet there's been lots of games where you've gone, we've not won this game because of Mohamed El Nenny. We'll move on. Okay. That's fine. No. They said I'm here. There's a. I'm here to. You're going to get put under a little bit. This is not how you saw it, is look it? At, <laughs> look at you adjusting for inflation. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. I, c- I could be convinced about Onenny and Holding. Mac, can I just throw out some other names? Yuri and Timber's going to be in this list. I didn't put him in because he's had 45 minutes of sample, but he will be in this list at some point. Unbelievable footballer. Okay. I think Chamberlain had a shout to be somewhere in this. D- talk to me about Chamberlain. Why should could, he be in the list? Like, was he? Good feed. So was he a successful signing? I think I think all in. Again, yeah, but what is a successful signing? He, again, I, I think some people go, well, he didn't win a trophy. Yeah, but he got he picked for the team every single week. He, yeah. he was contributing to the club. He wasn't terrible. Like, you know, he got some he, money got back. A really good, got a really good sale for him for Liverpool. Yeah. Went on to be part of a title winning team. He's clearly not a terrible player. No. I think again, it's not, you know, we go into, well, he was a terrible signing or he's an amazing signing. It's fine if he was just all right. He didn't start Join. getting played in his rightful position until right at the end, yep. either, did he? Re- uh, but also, really versatile. And actually, I think it would have yeah. fit into a... I, I, at one point, there was a period early Arteta when he was out at the Liverpool team, I thought, I'd have him back. I, I, I'm just so confused with his career. I, and I mean that with the greatest respect. Like He seems like a great person, great professional. I'm, I'm always... Um, at we, so we had... Um, we had Michael, um, who's Port Vale's physio. It was brilliant last week chatting to him because it, it's so interesting to find out, like about these players and, and when they're injured and what it's like. Mm. And so if you haven't listened to that one, um, so I haven't sort of promoted it too much, sadly, um, I should have. But uh, it's a really, really good podcast, really, really insightful. But a lot of those players, they get they get hammered for being injured. 
Like, there's yeah. no choice in it. Like, yeah. what are you on about? There's a duality so, to it, though. Some players are better in your head when they are injured. Right, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Well, yeah, yeah. like Nkunku with Chelsea. I mean, no, he is great, but like, you're not really seeing him because yeah. he's injured. We, so, yeah, we, I'm a bit we, confused by his We've spoken about that with, with Timber. I, I do rate him so much, but he's currently the best player in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> An Arsenal fan says. Yeah. The missing piece. Yeah, it's always that player. The world's best player. Yeah, it's, it's convenient that the missing piece is always the piece that doesn't yeah, yeah, seem to be yeah. available right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think in time, Timber, would, like, uh, you guys, everyone seems very convinced on him very quickly, which is good. Do you know what? Under, in your nearly men. Yeah. Zinchenko, should he not be in there? I think you'd be in. I think I, it's probably recency bias. I'm in a bit of a Zinchenko. You're not, you're not getting on with I'm him. A bit of a, in, in a bit of a Zinchenko out era. Right. I think if he'd left the club, I might have put him in. But at the moment, I'm just like... Interesting. A so good, really good player. Just, just He's cost us a few times recently, and that's annoyed me. In terms of the overall dial of Arsenal's stock, mm-hmm. when Zinchenko came in yep. and where you are now... Mm-hmm. You are higher. Yep. And I would said I would give him at least twelve percent of that credit for that. Wow. Do you know what I mean? He's allowed us to play in a different way, but is there no other player on planet Earth who could have done that? I don't think so. Look, uh, look, I'm a hundred percent biased on this because at the moment I'm annoyed. You're at struggling him. with him. I'm parasocially annoyed at him. He doesn't know this. <laughs> but <laughs> if you are listening, uh, right? The... So you're not on my list, Alex. Because I, I would, I would also another nearly man who's not on your list, who I would put in here above El Nenny, and this is why Zinchenko for me I think really needs to be in this list. Is Kieran Tierney was the guy for you? He was so for important. Yeah, for a period. And yeah. when he was injured, <laughs> he was in, uh, people were like, oh, we miss him, we miss him. Because you did actually miss him because he added so much when he was playing. Mm-hmm. And Zinchenko has ruined his career. <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. I think Arteta changing the system has, has basically put the nail in the coffin. Yes, that doesn't help. But, but for someone to be that important and yeah. then one player to come in and he's one of your better players. As I use the analogy a lot of time, championship managers used to have your three players who were sort of glowing. Yeah. Uh, had a little star next to them. Yeah. I think Tierney was one of those in maybe the first year Mate, of Arteta. He was, he was, he was crucial. arguably top three most important players alongside Saka and Aubameyang at one point. So how on he earth are neither those two in? Because, got, why is El Nenny on this list, Alex? I, I just love the El Nenny signing. I don't know if people hate it. <laughs> I, just I just love him. I just love him. But Tierney wears shorts when it snows. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Did you know that? You put it on the ripple effect. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen the team, he wears shorts when it snows, and everyone's like, that's so Scotty. Proper Scott, yeah, it's all just, the time. I just think uh, maybe it starts and ends again, and there's going to be people that I am looking for the arguments to justify to put them on the list, and there's people who are going to be looking to, because they're not on the list to justify against them. Mm. These are my justifications against. They will always be for and against. I think he had a brilliant peak at Arsenal, so maybe he's unlucky to, to not be on the list, but his injury record... The fact that the teams have moved moved away from him it was a good signing. Twenty five million pounds is not crazy money. I just I think because it's all kind of petered out. That's probably uh, uh, yeah. I, I, my I feel I think Kieran's been done here, mate. Do you? I think Kieran's been done. I think Kieran and Zinchenko have been absolutely done here. But we must move on. This is your list that is set in stone. It's not necessarily we can move it. We can it's move, your, mate. I'm not even an Arsenal fan. I, I, I'm just asking questions. Hey, don't get rattled by me, mate. I'm not even an Arsenal fan. <laughs> Look, you know your club. You know your players. In my opinion. Number 17. Thomas Rizitsky, who was signed in the summer of 2006 for £8 million. 208, no, sorry, uh, uh, 246 appearances for Arsenal. 10 years at the club. Fantastic player on his day. So much value out of him. So mu- so many great memories. I remember this goal he scored in the FA Cup, running from deep. I think it was against Spurs. I think he beat Danny Rose. Um, he would probably be a bit higher because, again, I think he he's a top, top player, but I think he's an even better signing. Mm. But he spent 1,011 days injured, which is equivalent wow. to 2.76 wow. years. So he'd be a bit higher if he went for that. He was... If he played today... Yeah. Talent-wise, like raw talent. So he did a great video recently about Incredible. Emil Smith-Rowe and, yep. and, and one of the big storylines this year has been you know, the two eights and Havertz kind of not being the right guy. And mm-hmm. so who is the right guy? Jack has gone. How do you fix it? Is Odegaard actually on the right side of the pitch? All that stuff. Great stuff on the different not. Go check it out. If Riziki's in the squad, yeah, you'd be killing it, mm. wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah, I think Riziki was one of those players who he was so flashy as an, inter- uh, what's the, no, spurty, that's the word. Just so he would come in and play 
10, 15 brilliant games and you'd be like, oh my God, we got him back and then you just get injured again. Mm. So people kind of forget about him. I will say, like, for example, his um, his goals and assists, not that this is particularly, I don't I think Rosicki is maybe one of the players it's harsh to judge him with this, is 287 um, minutes per goal and assist. So his output wasn't crazy, mm. but his... Is he the pass before the pass? His, yeah, I think he's the pass before the pass. I think he was the player who, like, technically, he could get out of any situation. Maybe, maybe... I'm, I'm going to say this and think of five more players, but you know, I'm looking in the Santi Cazorla, Zinchenko type technical conversations with yeah. Brzezinski. He was unbelievable, just physically let him down. Uh, I wanted to bring up Cazorla in the sense that, like, again, two players who struggled with injury. Yep. And actually, God, there's a lot of those Tierney, Welbeck. There's a lot of players who struggled Abu with injury. It doesn't Abu qualify Diaby. for this list. But... Yeah. Mm. If in particular those two, yes. do you think, and it's very easy to say, but I know you'll be honest, do you think that would have made that much of a difference in, in those, you know, sort of more barren years? In in the end, when you're selling Van Persie and you're selling Fabregas and you're selling Clichy and, Clichy yeah. and your Sanyas and your best players and Nazaris, you, there's only so much you can do. You know, mm. you can be the best player in the world. If you, you know, you can be De Bruyne. If you don't have Haaland to pass to, yeah. you're limited. You know? Yeah, true. You're still De Bruyne, but you're limited. Rizicki, uh, he was one of those players that, and I'm happy to do it, and I actually really enjoy it. And uh, there's a player now, actually, my mate's a Brentford fan, and, um, Jensen is killing it for Brentford now. Yeah. And I I had sort of put on record, I don't normally do that. I was like, he's not good enough. He's not good enough for the Premier League. And I think most Brentford fans felt the same. He's now clearly good enough. Mm. And I love that. I love when people kind of prove you wrong. Yeah. Riziki was one of those ones where he came in. I went, I remember talking to my, ass, uh, my mate, who was an Oscar fan. I was like, so you've signed another five foot nine yeah. bloke who wears gloves and has <laughs> yeah. his shirt out. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> What are you yeah, doing? We had and... this period. It was, yeah, just everyone we signed was this sort of diminutive yeah. number 10. Little Kleb yeah, guy. Yeah, Kleb. Oh. But, like, and then it was one, but then, like, you watch it because I was like, ah, oh, fair enough. <laughs> He's yeah. decent, yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, okay. No, I'm okay with him. That's fine. Carry on. Uh, number 16. I've gone for Olivier Giroud. I think, again, these are. You know, obviously this is, this is my list, so I'm I'm I love the player, so the, that 100% has has an impact. I'm not suggesting this is objective. Um, 253 appearances for Arsenal, a goal every 100 or assist every 110 minutes. And when he was considered, you know, the problem with Giroud is he had some flashpoints in his Arsenal career. Like he didn't score for something like 10 games in a row. He had this game against I think it was Monaco in the Champions League. He was absolutely terrible. So people remember those moments, right? And that colours it. But I think if you look at his overall contribution, when we signed him, when he left, I appreciate it's probably coloured by the fact he's gone on to do really, really well. Yeah. That's 100% colouring it, and I won't doubt that. But in terms of a signing, a pick out of talent from Montpellier, I think it's, uh, you know, I think they just won the league, so it wasn't the biggest pick out in the world. But, you know, in terms of, you know, it, it, it's value for money as well is a massive part of, of my list personally. And I think Giroud ticks a lot of boxes. Yep, 12 mil. Um, I think yeah, you know, solid, solid player did well. Definitely, I think it's definitely, definitely a thing. Like the the sort of career that he's gone on to have, and the because I was going to say it about Bernd Leno as well. Mm. If Bernd Leno is Germany's number one, yeah, and there's no competition, yeah, I think I'm not sh like I think he gets a better move than Fulham. Yeah, probably. Because sometimes the, I think the international element like does play a part yeah. in it. Like if you are, you know, your country's number, especially a major so country. I annoy you, mate. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Give it a rest. <laughs> um, but Giroud, it's kind of in the other way where it's like, I mean, he's all right. Like, he's been, and he's look, AC Milan. He's done well. He's and he's useful in what he does. What's his France numbers? He's, he's, a, a he's got enough goals, but he's played enough games. Yeah, as well. yeah, he's played a lot of games, but he's also—I think he's—I'm pretty sure he scored more than like Henri. And like, yeah, he's, he's got, got some, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's top. Numbers. He's the all-time scorer. I'm pretty sure. Well, if he's not done it by nah, now, Christ, is. we're talking about that. Like, do you know what he 56 is? Fifty-six goals in 128 games. Crazy. Do, that, do you know what he I mean, is? That's okay. I've a... What's Kane's record? Ooh. Just to put it in perspective, because I, I think in I, there is such games. a gloss. There's such a gloss. <laughs> Not no, against but, but, but Giroud's playing. But Giroud's playing <laughs> those games Andorra, as well. That's, that's the thing. San Marino. Yeah. Uh, I, Sixty-two in eighty-nine game. But penalties. Yeah, yeah. I guess Giroud's not taking his penalties. That's true. That's true. Uh, do you know what Giroud is? This is a, a phrase borrowed from one of my coaching friends. He's a perfect example of technical aesthetic bias which is a fancy way of saying he doesn't look like he's very good at football but he is yeah he's one of those players who like he's just a bit clumsy he's a bit sort of falling over he's a bit he misses a lot of chances but actually he's pretty effective yeah he's not good at football but he's a good footballer yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, yeah I, I get that i do think yeah i do think he's had a glow up in terms of I, yes. do i'd love i'd love to see some interviews 
and the comments, and we did this actually, we did this on a, a video about Trippier. We went and found a, a video where Trippier had gone to Tottenham and there were people going, oh, no, he's rubbish. Da, 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 yeah. da. I think there was someone like, uh, yet they were like, no, nah, we need to get in Yedlin. <laughs> Something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, so I'd love to see what, what Arsenal fans were saying when he left the club. Yes. No, 100%. And, and I, 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 absolutely, it's it's sort of coloured by the fact he's gone on to win, you know, what he's won. So, yeah, that, that's part of it. But I do think as a signing, it's... it's, it's, it's How much did he go for? Kai, can you have a little look at that? It was really he good. Was Chelsea, uh, didn't he? Yeah, God, yeah. Might have been free. I can't remember. What was it? Or was it in January? Yeah, I feel free as well. Yeah, something like that. Anyway. Okay, next up. 15. 15 is Mr. Meza Ozil. Mm. Again, uh, I had him lower... But Kai actually convinced me to put him higher. He won four <laughs> FA Cups. Won four FA Cups. I'll do the positive side. Four FA Cups. Yep. He had one of the best assist seasons ever for Arsenal. Unbelievable football player. Um, technically, again, in, in that Santi Rosicki type conversation, you know, uh, unbelievable technical football player on his day. One of the best playmakers. A victim of the way football changed, I think, towards the end. Um, and the sort of the typical number 10. I think if he'd been born 10 years earlier, we're having very different conversations about him. Um, yeah, or, or seven years later. Yeah, like now, like now, he'd be great, possibly. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. well, do, the, the weird thing with Özil that people always say is like his running numbers are actually really good, don't they? Yeah, I, I think a lot of the, a lot of it was that kind of English bias of like, oh, he just looks like he doesn't care, yeah. that sort of stuff. But actually, the passion, the passion. Yeah. Um, and also the day he signed, it's up there with best days of my life, genuinely. And that, this one hundred percent is part of it. it, it that. I, I can't that Sky yeah that, that's got that clip of Sky Sports when it, it was like it's, it's one of the best days of my life straight up I remember texting my friend Ryan like I think I've I don't think I've ever been happier no, which is maybe no an indictment on my life like... but it was genuinely are you I saying that now I so can... is that you in the flashback no, in the past that was in the flashback yeah in the film it's sort of, yeah, yeah. That's fine, that's fine. Um, but Jay, that day was like I can't I can't tell you how unrealistic that felt with the Wenger like maybe we have a good surprise that, all that stuff it's and it hundred percent contributes. Is this objective? No. So uh, it's it's in the best signing list, and that that part is it for, uh, is there for me. Do you know? And something that you can't apply to any other player on this list is this is and and this is a, a ringer podcast, and my favorite ringer podcast is uh, the rewatchables. And in that they have a thing called Apex Mountain, and they talk about uh, an actor. So for example, Leonardo DiCaprio, and they'll, talk, they'll be talking about a film that he's in, like The Departed or whatever, and they'll ask the question. Was this film his apex mountain? Was this when right. he was at, at his right. peak, right? right? And then they'll talk about other things like, um, so for example, uh, Titanic with DiCaprio. Was this the apex mountain for, um, for, for like frozen bits of wood? And they were like, yeah, it is, right? Okay. Or, or more, but more justly, it would be like, was that Leonardo DiCaprio's apex yeah. mountain? And there's a, there's a feeling that that was his apex mountain. Yeah. The transfer window. Yep. I would say mm -hmm. that when that news dropped mm -hmm. with Ertzil, I think that was the apex mountain of, of transfer windows. Of transfer windows. I, I agree because it's also just before you were getting moment by moment drip fed news. Mm. It all happened very quickly. There was a couple of rumors. You, you know, I was at school, like think, you know, going, oh, wait, what? What? You hear it off your mate? That it, I cannot tell you. I feel so sorry for people who get Fabrizio Romano saying so and so just pick their nose. Like you hear every moment of a transfer. And so, so for example, Rice was an amazing transfer, but and maybe it would be higher if that just dropped. That's it. Then you'd go, oh my, yeah. And it's part. And of it. we, it's yeah, we don't have that really as much as we kind of used to. But also, yeah, you're right. It's not uh, sources are saying, well, let's let's make sure those sources are right, oh, and the sources are everywhere. Yeah, there's yeah, one yeah. source now. Yeah. Oh, there's two sources now, which <laughs> that's kind of horny, that right? hurts it. Yeah. But so yeah, as I mean, this was such a such an odd one. But forty two meals a lot. Record signing at the time. He was on 300k by the end. I don't, you know, I, again, this is why, uh, spoiler alert, Aubameyang is not as high on my list as he could be. Because when I pay a record transfer fee for you and make you my most expensive player and you deliver probably not even where you should be delivering, I can't put you... You're a great player. So yeah. you're on the, on the players list. But again, you know, as a signing, it's a different uh, thing. Yeah. And do you know, a bit like, say like Bruno Fernandes with Man United, Man United are going for a really tricky time. Mm. His numbers are good. Like he's obviously a good player. He has moments of frustration and people are annoyed at that and they're saying he's not good enough captain yeah. or whatever. But again, if you pick him up and you put him in the Man City team and you do the exact same numbers, like yeah. he's like, what a player, what a signing, worth every penny. I'm not saying Bruno Fernandes not been, it's probably the bad example in that sense. But I think in terms of the overall feeling of a high profile signing, what's happening around that club 
it makes life difficult. And I think that was the problem with Arsenal is the story was the turmoil. Yes. Yeah. The story was the stagnation. Yeah. The story was that it felt a little bit soft, a bit yeah. wimpy. Yeah. And, and he was, was the, the yeah, symbol of that. The right? of that yeah. yeah. Okay. Number 14 is Mr. Dependable Nacho Monreal. And he, and he has three stars next to his he name. he was signed in a January window, which right. I love. <laughs> love that you Just love that. it. <laughs> just love it. I love, I love a January. I yeah, think it might have yeah. a deadline day. I just love it. Yeah. I love a, a, a properly good. Tommy Asu was a deadline day signing as well. He was in summer. But... Monreal, deadline day signing, love it. I think, look, for how many years was it? They've got six years at the club, 251 appearances, eight and a half million pounds. This guy was never below a seven out of 10, usually mm -hmm. up at an eight, eight out of 10. I think he won a couple of trophies. It wasn't, he's not the best player in the world, but what do you, what do you want from a signing? If, if, if he's not on your list, what do you want from a signing? You want them to be dependable, check. You want them to be available, check. You want them to be performing well, check. You want them to be, he can't control whether Olivier Giroud is missing 10, 15 goals. Yep. He was, an amazing player, never caused a problem, really good wages, great professional, amazing signing. 251 games in six seasons. Like when we're talking about some of the other names we've just spoken about, 254, 253, it's for eight seasons. Ozil, I mean, was, Ozil was eight seasons and, and got 254 appearances. You know, El Nene's been there. <laughs> Don't you come for him. <laughs> Seven seasons, 162 games. Yeah, it's a great shout. I draw, one that I think people will probably forget about, he's one of those you get, he's always like, he's like a Dennis Irwin. Yeah, you sort of forget about. Yeah. Oh yeah, and like, and so if you've got right, list the team that played the. Yeah, he's yeah, the yeah. game. He's the name that you yeah, forget, and then yeah. you feel really bad about. Yeah, yeah. Good shout. Okay, I'm fine with that. Thirteen is Mr. Takahiro Tomiyasu. Okay, and what I will say, guys, is uh, we are now in right in the meat of the good signing um, zone. Eleven yes. to eighteen. Good signing. So Tomiyasu in there, very high up when you think of the sort of the big names that are there, but I'm okay. He's a bit like Monreal. This is an Arsenal hipster pick. <laughs> I love the honesty. We I love, love him. Right. We love him so much. How so much do you think he's worth? Uh, uh, I think probably four hundred million pounds <laughs> to, to the right club. To the right with club. With inflation. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just That's a good question. Though. How much do you think he is worth? So when we last did it, there was rumours that Bayern were coming in for him, and again, value is so re relative to 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 the market. Who's buying you? Sorts, sorts of things. Again, Tommy Asu could go for if you didn't want him, and he was out of the team. 25 million. But he also, I think, to Bayern Munich in a January window when they're in an injury crisis could be 60, 70 million. I'll stand by that. I guess I think I said 80 million. I'll say a bit far. All right. But, okay. but so I think, um, yeah. 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 But look, 16 million pounds. Name me another player who can play right back, right centre back, left centre back, and left back. And they got in midfield as well once or twice. He might have done once. Like 20 minutes here and there. I, I've even seen him score a scream. Of a, for well, he certainly sort of steps in and uh, has been right. a bit inverted at times. Both, and he even gets gets up and wins headers for wins against Man City, doesn't he? Both feet. He's got I'm, two feet. He's got two, he's got two legs. <laughs> <Count them>. Two <laughs> arms. <laughs> everything, mate. He's a head. <laughs> he's a head. Yeah. Um, uh, he was having some uh, difficulties, like, difficulties last year, I think, because his um, mother unfortunately passed away. He's on good wages. He seems like a really good professional. Again, you know, all, all these things are not saying that they... But I think, and this is my hot take about Tommy Asu, I think Tommy Asu starts for every club other than Liverpool City. Obviously, and he plays for Arsenal. I think he starts for 17 Premier League clubs. Sorry, in which position? Uh, any of them. He, he would Because um, he'd get a game. Because he can play. Or, like, seriously, is there another player? And um, This is not a rhetorical question. Is there another player who can play four positions and has played four positions? Timber. Hey, you've got him. Got Tim him. Timber. Got. I think need. <laughs> I think Timber would struggle and I wouldn't trust him. He might have done it for Ajax in a three, mm. but in a two as a centre-back, ah, probably okay. on the left-hand side, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pick him. Yeah, I think, like, you're right. I think the whole way across. I mean, Joe Gomez? Go Joe Gomez. <laughs> no, I think it's fair shot. Do you know what as well? And I think, it, I think we spoke about this the last time you were on or when, we, when you got cooked. It was, the thing with him is that it, although he might not be a starter, I think you'll still... When you, we're going to play 60 games in a season... You're not going to play the same eleven, and you're going to need other players, and you need someone who's going to allow you to retain that level. Yeah, yeah. and he's so great and for that. And he accepts that. that role. Yeah, and he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, good shout. Like Loving this, very boys. Hipster. It's good. Loving this. Nice little, nice little patch here. Number twelve. Don't spoil it. <laughs> Number twelve. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Dum dum dum, dum dum dum. Kai's uh, not sure. Kai's not sure. Loving this. I'm, I'm going to be. I want to hear him out. So I did this a couple of weeks ago with a couple of friends, and I didn't have Alexis. Spoiler alert, didn't have Alexis Sanchez as high as I do. And that was wrong. I accept I was wrong. <laughs> Which is right? also written in the notes. I literally accept I was wrong. I was okay? wrong. 
I'm open to changing my mind, but Aubameyang, I stick with where he's not in my top 10. Again, this is my list, so it's subjective, right? But, <laughs> Go but ahead. Stop apologising. I think <laughs> when you pay, first, as I've said before, when you pay £60 million to make someone your captain, your highest paid player, I expect performances. If you if you don't do that, then... Or if you do do that, that's not then... Oh, brilliant. And you're going to perform for us as well. I've just paid you £300,000 a week, so you better perform. So that doesn't wash for me massively as, as the kind of main factor. He's not, in terms of his goals and assists per minute, he's not in the, I think I think Alexis was higher. Yeah, Alexis is higher. Uh, obviously, Podolski was higher. He had an amazing couple of seasons for us. Was a really, really good player. For me, the way he left, the stories, actually, well, um, I can't remember your mate's name that we met um, uh, at the concert. He was telling me a story Dom? about, Dom, yeah, he was telling me a story about, about Bamiang. Heard a couple of other stories, just behind the scenes stuff, and you just go, no. You know, I think a part of it is because he's kind of emblematic of this culture change at Arsenal. And I think similar to what you were mentioning about Ozil earlier, he was kind of emblematic or the apotheosis of the weak Arsenal end of end of Wenger era. Yeah. I think Aubameyang was the kind of the fall guy for a lot of that stuff. And I do feel sorry for him. But with great power comes great responsibility. And I don't think he stood up in certain moments. He stood up in the FA Cup final. That and, and that is why Saved he's on Saved Arteta's job. 1-0 knowledge after three wins without... On a, a, on a few games. Okay. No, 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 Arteta would not have been sacked after that game. He might have been sacked after that um, game, uh, Boxing Day, 26th of December, 2020, um, at Millsmith Row. I think he, I think he is the only one who can claim he said Arteta's job. He can, and this is why he's on my list. He's in my top half of the yeah. list because he was a fantastic player for Arsenal. But again... It depends how you want to spin it, and I think the way you're spinning it is fine. I think I'm what looking I would for reasons say, not to have him in the list because I personally you don't really just, like him. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's I get it. I think as much as that single goal against Norwich saving his job, the FA Cup win I think was saving Arteta's job a little bit as well because he kind of had that go. Well, he's won a trophy, like, and, and as bizarre as that is, and as stupid as that is, it is a thing. And at Bamiyang that year in the cup was outrageous. And and I think actually in that back end of the, the year he was he was amazing. And then the other thing, again, you can spin it either way. In terms of sort of making Arteta the manager that he is, the way he behaved and and the fact that he was kind of at the end anyway gave Arteta the perfect example to bomb out someone high profile. And I know he'd kind of done it with Ozil, but to do it again. It re I think that that had a, a ripple effect across the group of like, and it's something I think Eric Ten Hag kind of tried to done, but to have done, but obviously hasn't been able to get the performances. Mm. And I, I'm not sure. I think he's dug his heels in maybe a little bit too much. But I think with the Yang, I think it it allowed this new breed of leaders to sort of come through and to sort of palate cleanse a little bit. And so if a Yang's not a Yang, then I, I see, but I get what you're I saying. I see what you're saying. But I'm but spinning it. I'm spinning you're it. You're spinning it. And, yeah, and yeah. if you were like, right, so we're signing you because in a couple of seasons we're <laughs> yeah, going to yeah, get a cultural yeah. manager and he's really good at you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, but did that help? Like, so if, if a Yang just left yeah, and someone had come in and gone, we'll have him. Okay, mm. yeah, go. Like, um, I can't even say that Socrates. Yeah, like he just he just disappeared, didn't he? All of a sudden, he's got his contract cancelled, right? Right. So say that had happened with him, would like would you've got the sort of benefits of what happened with Abamian because he was such a story? Maybe not. Maybe not. But I I don't, I don't think that makes him a, a good signing necessarily. I, I think I think he was very important. Maybe if we're putting you know a list of important players in the Emirates here again, he's he's higher up the list. Has he won but... your trophy as well. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I just look. It's it's ultimately some people people will disagree with this, and that's absolutely fair. And and I can't really disagree with them. But what I feel is the current success again. It starts and finishes. He down tools in that twenty one, twenty two, or twenty end of twenty twenty one. He down tools. I, he lich. I was watching this guy. He was not running. He was not playing. He was our captain, captain leader, legend. If you're the highest paid player at the club, I remember sat there trying to lock down football. Oh my god, try not to. Abamyang was absolute. He just. <laughs> It just looked like he couldn't care less. Mm. And for me, that that's how I'm thinking of football. But Hang you know, on. I just I find that I just personally yeah. It didn't you win the FA Cup when it was locked down though? That was nineteen twenty, season after. Okay. Uh but I think the the big question when it comes to Bamiyang here and, and him being twelfth on the list is with any of the other guys, can you argue for them for him to be above them? So let's find out. That's your job. Yeah. <laughs> well that's that's the comments job. <laughs> And uh, they will. Uh, yeah. Number 11, per 
Murtasaka. I put a big thing on this and similar with uh, someone else coming up. He's now the academy manager and that is a massive part of it. This that does, I think that's a massive thing for Arsenal and I think he, from all the reports I hear, the way he's uh, created this, like I think it's called Strong Young Gunners um, mindset and stuff. He's really clarified the academy. He's brought us forward. He's brought some great players through. Um, you hear so many amazing things about the academy. Still waiting to see the fruit, which is a criticism I have of Arteta. But anyway, I think what Murtisaka is doing at the academy is amazing. So I think that 100% plays into it. But honestly, mate, unbelievable performance. I think in the 16-17 final, having basically not played for the entire season, signed 11-12 for £8 million. Uh, that partnership with him and Koscielny was, um, I think we didn't lose a game for like, uh, you know, I'm making this up at this point, but some, about a year, something like, I can't remember. They, 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 Eight they, years, wasn't it? I think it was, they didn't lose a game ever. <laughs> um, uh, 221 appearances for Arsenal, captain. I, I really, really like the signing, especially considering, I think it was a deadline day signing as well. It was um, him and now Teta, right? It, uh, it was, the, it was the trolley dash. I remember I being on holiday yeah. with my family, watching us get spanked by Man United. And the next day we were, I think we were after everyone, like everyone mm. under the sun. But yeah, I, I love that. I love the Mertz Akasani. I think he's one of those players who you you just go, yep, he's in the team every single week. No problem. Never injured. Bang. Done. Proper, Proper. centre back, isn't it? I could take free kicks as well. Yes, a Werder Bremen. <laughs> mm. if, uh, if he's not the academy manager, is he still to Is he still 11? Probably not. Um, I think what he's gone on to do at Arsenal is, is a part of it. He, pro- he probably... 17th, 18th, something like that. Yeah. Pops him up a little bit. It's interesting though, isn't it? It shows how important ex-players are yep. in terms of retaining like the culture time. Mm-hmm. And again, they do need to be sort of ingrained in some way. Came in and assisted for Freddie Lundberg as well when he was, when he was in. So, okay. look, yeah, I just think he's a good, good egg. 102 caps for Germany, surprisingly. World, yeah. And World Cup winner. In a good time for them as well. Yep. Another great example of does not look like a, like someone who's good at football, but mm. was a great footballer. Mm. Uh, and you know, I've got a few of my mates from school who uh, listen to the pod and, uh, and Sean who messaged me when I did this last time I threw my friend Matthew Mullen who I know listens to nothing I do and I said <laughs> how he, he was again a great example of a, a good footballer but not good at football because if you if like you were playing going yeah Matt just ping that over there will you yeah. just shit the bed yeah. and I, I imagine Matt Saka despite the free kicks I get that vibe from him yes um, oh, anyway a, and it looks a, a little bit like he's um You've basically, uh, he's wood made of wood. Yes. And you've, you've just sort of screwed in bits. Turned like milk. In a yeah. modern system, it'd be done, but it was great for us. Yeah. Okay, top we're in our top 10. Here we go. Top 10. Uh, Santiago Cazorla nice. is my number 10. Nice. Unbelievable player. 14 and a half million pounds in 12 13. 180 appearances for Arsenal. Six years at the club. Could get out of a phone box. Technically, um, and did when he went to Villarreal and literally <laughs> got <laughs> that was <laughs> yeah, a magician. Did we need the magician? Did yeah. we need the magician? Could, you, could we just put the dry ice in there and let yeah. the dry ice go? And look, it's Santi yeah. Gazzola. That's just one of those meetings where someone doesn't want to say no. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah. So we can like do that. that. We've got this dry ice guy, but the, yeah. he's Have desperate to be it? in it though. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, what? No, I need to stand by it. I need to stand by it. It's sick. It makes it safe. Well, yeah, but you're going to ruin it. But I wear a waistcoat. <laughs> and I'll gel <laughs> my hair. I'll gel my hair like a little Mohican. <laughs> Ridiculous. But yeah. Um, r- ruined my injuries towards the end, but what a player on his day. What a player. Still playing as well? Still playing, I think, for Real Oviedo. So, so um, yeah, yeah, top, top player. That's Love crazy. It. He's, uh, yeah, a great story with him in terms of, again, the, the podcast last week, we spoke about um, the the problems with, say, like inflammation with players. Like that's something that people don't talk about a lot of the time. And that was the thing with uh, Cazorla that he had, it was sort of the bacteria in the ankle that he had to make these changes and have these surgeries. And then you think, well, surgery done, right? We'll see you in a bit. And then it just doesn't happen. And he's got like, if you, there's a picture of his ankle and it's got a bit of skin that's got tattoo on, yeah. on his ankle. Um, so for him to come back is amazing. Little ripple effect from Kai here. Where is it? He's saying that. I can't, I can't find that, but I know what it was. He basically, oh yeah, that's it. A match in 2016, Cazorla went to take an outswinging corner with his right foot. Captain Lauren Koscielny then shouts for him to switch to his left foot for an inswinger. Ultimately, nothing came of the corner. <laughs> hey, almost. <laughs> the point of the podcast. Right. But, um, <laughs> don't but say they had scored of it. This is this is Kai. This is shite. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but say they had scored from it. It could have been something other teams copied. So this is like when Kai writes these down, and we've missed it, mate. It's not been the same without you doing these things. But it's a bit like songwriting, and I think. 
I imagine. Like with songwriting, you could make bad songs, and you got to make you got to write the bad songs to write the good songs. You got to write the bad ripples to get the good ripples. Um, they said, but to say they had scored from it, <laughs> it could have been something other teams I have copied. Love <laughs> I love it. With players, this is a, this is unbelievable. With players able to do this fairly rarely, it would have created a demand for a whole new type of player: <laughs> the two-footed corner taker role. The ripple effect of this could then have been that some players uh, going from being fairly anonymous <laughs> to become must-haves <laughs> purely for this skill alone. Can't just let another it player change the corner. landscape. <laughs> yeah, this is the lie. And it could have changed the landscape of the transfer window entirely. Forever. Across Kai, the Kai, I love you. It's Siri. great to have you back. Define <laughs> reach. Utter shite. Next up, nine. <laughs> Number nine is Martin Odegaard. Thirty million pounds. That is looking more and more like a steal. Yeah. Um. I think you know, captain uh, emblematic again of this kind of new Arsenal wave. I think again, I'm starting. There's a couple of players here who I start to project forward a little bit and start to go. And that's a hundred. You know, and I can't guarantee anything. But <laughs> this is the whole thing when people go, "Well, what's he done then?" It's like, okay, so Arteta has done nothing, and then the moment he wins the Premier League title, he's a genius. No, <laughs> it's like he's getting to that point. Right. So Martin Erdegaard, I think, uh, yeah, he's coming in and, and played at a really, really good level. He's improved so much. He's adap adapted to a new role this season, coming a little bit deeper. I think he'll go over to the left-hand side. I think he is a brilliant... He leads our press. Another thing that is massively he does. underrated about that. He really him. does. He's a... He's a uh, and he, a good press is so related to the timing of it. And no, and part of the problem last season is we were just go, 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 go. And this season, I think Odegaard's really sort of got on. I don't know, just give it a minute. And it will, I think it'll help us towards the back end of the season. I think for £30 million, I would be surprised if when all is said and done, we're not sat here talking about him in the Fabregas mould. Level. At, at level yeah. at, at Arsenal. And hopefully, you know, you'd imagine probably a few more trophies. I hope maybe. so. We'll see. I hope so. I, I, yeah, 100%. I think, I guess the one thing, when again, if you're projecting forward, uh, he is a leader. Within that group, will he be sort of uh, overtaken by other leaders in the group? And also, if you, let's say, the bottling that's occurred thus far, if you can't get past that and it keeps happening, is he the guy who starts to get a bit of heat? Because I think we, we see that when we get mm. to the end of the year. We go, last year it was like, well, they haven't got, they haven't got the leaders in there. Mm. And Odegaard and Zinchenko, those kind of, kind of guys. So that might be something that kind of, Possible and it hurts think, him as time goes on. I think that's, that's unbelievable signing. Unbelievable. Yeah, I think that's a good shout as well because he, because of the type of leader he is. Yeah, I think no one's ever going to question whether he's a by example guy, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, and, and you know Declan Rice is going to talk to you a bit more. But I, you need this is the thing. Two things. I think firstly, people. I think people misunderstand where leaders come from, and leaders are not sort of plonked in. They have to grow and grow respect. And you can't you can't lead something just going right. You know, I've just turned up and here I am and I'm a leader and I'm going to lead you. No, you have to grow that respect, right? Totally. And the Odegaard has earned that respect. And yeah. and Well, and I think, sure, one thing I would say, I think there are some people who are just that guy. Sometimes. Not always. Yeah. David Beckham, great example. Not that guy. Yeah. Until, until he, he'd been through enough stuff yeah. that he became that guy. Um, Maybe it's easier for some people to earn that respect, but I, th I still think there is a period where you have to earn that. Mm. And, and and also, uh, leadership looks very, you know, I think, not to generalise, but I think some people still, f maybe slightly older fans, think, and understandably, a, a football leader has to look like a Roy Keane, has to look like a Steven Gerrard or whatever. Leadership in every sense, in every, you know, you know, I, I've come from um, the theatre world and you've seen it with directors. Directors have gone from these tyrannical you know, charismatic, often men to people who are more facilitative. That's just a different style of leadership. Mm. I think you actually do need a bit of both. Yeah. But I think moving from that model away doesn't make someone not a leader. It's just a different style of leadership. And, and taking charge of a game of football is very different now. Yes. It's very difficult yeah. now. That's why I kind of, when you put, when you compare him with De Bruyne, I think, you know, can he get to, he's never going to be that set piece taker. It doesn't seem like he is in the same mold as De Bruyne, but like, can he start to like, own a game a little bit more yeah. like that. I don't know. I, I think the problem with that con comparison is, for me, De Bruyne has a superpower. And I, I, I'm talking about this so much at the minute. So much of football is just putting someone in a position as many times as you can where they do the thing that no one can stop. Trent's ball to Salah. No team in the world can stop that. But literally no one can stop it because it's it's a unique skill. De Bruyne that half space cross to 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 Haaland and you know Haaland gets facing behind. You can't stop that. 
What is Erdegaard's version of that? I still think that's a question to be answered. Really but it could question. come with someone, you know, say we signed an Osserman. Who knows? Maybe a slip ball. You know, that slip well, ball to Osserman becomes the thing. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. Because, yeah, he's not, you know, he's not had space to, to do that. Yeah. But again, come back to being a signing. Think of what a kind of uh, the road he had trodden up to that point. Um not it doesn't look like a gamble at all, but at the time it kind of it felt like a touch of a uh, of a of a gamble there. And also, last thing, over the years you have you have oh he's a he's a five mil player or he's like, way back when it was like oh he's a five hundred k player like, and I think a new one is he's thirty mil. Yeah, Odegaard's yeah, yeah, yeah. not thirty mil, and you bought him for thirty mil. No, so and it was and you're right, it was a bit more of a gamble than we think of it was of it being at the time. At the time, yeah. yeah. Um, right, next one. Number eight. The man. There's nobody better than Mikel Arteta. Look at that and top. Per meter se- oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and legend, of course. Yeah. yeah, look, obviously, this is massively based on what he's gone on to do. But I, So I think as a player, you can't, you can't put him in this. But in terms of the importance of the signing, I, here's what I think it is, and this is a lot of projection. I think Arteta has a very steely exterior. But I think what you find is those people who are the most steely on the outside, are usually the most mushy underneath. And I think possibly, and this is, again, I'm projecting onto him, I think he was quite hurt by the fact he was never included in the Spain setup. Or even just being, you know, being in the squad, he was mm. never picked for Spain, right? But he, on his football IQ and his intelligence, everyone's saying, you get the game, mate. Pochettino, Guardiola, every, every co-sign, Wenger, every co-sign you need, he's got it. Mm. So it must feel like that frustration between going from I can see the game at this level but I can't play the game at this level and, that's, and that must be really frustrating and I think when the Arsenal move came along it sounds like from from the stories he jumped he because he loved Everton but he literally went no no this is my chance to go and win titles to go and show that I'm a top top player he won a couple of FA Cups didn't quite work out for him and I think I project onto him a level of fire in him of going I'm going to prove to you that I am that guy I'm in that I should be in the football conversation maybe not as a player but as a Xavi, as an Iniesta, I, I can see the game at that level. I may not have played it. And I think that's so much of what drives him. And I think he's, you can see the determination. When someone, when, if you said, what, how would you describe Arteta? You'd say extremely determined, extremely focused. Yep. That comes from somewhere. Yep. That has to come from somewhere. And if, I think if you look back, plot his story a little bit, you go, okay, this, this Arsenal signing going, right, I can speak to the big boys now. And you, I, I think you could tell when he was playing, he was quite frustrated by the fact that Arsenal weren't really there so I, I I think it's such an important signing and I think we'll look back and, and, and see it as even more so also with Arteta you know in terms of the playing days um, Barca not really working at Barca as well yes, so again yeah. that adds to adds to it and I actually think that makes him a better manager as well because I think often we see this where with a Gerard, we did a video on it recently we and we'd been chatting about it for a while because we wanted to be sure that we were felt correct in it we spoke to uh, David Garcia about um, positional play and and how those kind of players who play in that pl- one play in that position I think is important yeah. and th- I think like some people in the comments of that video didn't totally get what we were trying to say yeah. because it is a it's an amalgamation of different things and and not every player is going to be you know amazing but those players and I think Arteta is a great example in terms of his um, abilities with players themselves is that if he doesn't play for Rangers and Everton PSG. Well, PSG, but the, I think, well, PSG, I guess at the time weren't at the same level. But the, the reason I say Everton, maybe in particular, is you then have to deal with different kinds of personalities, yes. and that's why, say, like maybe maybe that's been Xavi's downfall a little bit that this time is that he has such high standards mm. because. Uh, so when you have such high standards, you can't understand, and you know that's the right way. Yeah, it's like being Michael Jordan and going and playing on the. Yeah, Wizards like Michael Jordan. Like... It's just, but it, for him to be Michael Jordan to be a that's a great example. Michael Jordan can't be a good manager. He just no, can't. He can't. But um, who's the guy who just, uh, did the three pointer? Um, white guy. Um, uh, Golden State Kerr. I think his name's Kerr. Steve Kerr. Yeah. Steve Kerr. He's a great example. Because again, what we're saying in the video is that if you don't have it all, you need to be able to find it all. Yeah, yeah. And if players don't have everything, you then go, oh, well, he needs he needs an arm around his shoulder yeah. and this guy is... That's why when we say like Rio Ferdinand, Roy Keane, those guys, and they're going, well, but these are the standards. Like, yeah, yeah but, but people are different. Yeah. And so that allows him to have more answers with people and on the pitch as well. So the, the mix between the two is you have a clarity of kind of 
what where you need to get to, but how you need to get there. Yep. And then also on the pitch as well. I think you're bang on. And the only thing I'd add to that is there's a, I think Rangers needed a win to win the league. I could be wrong about this, but I, I don't know the exact situation, but I know this happened. And he was, you know, 18, 19 or whatever he was at the, that stage. And he stepped up and he took the penalty to, at Rangers, I think at the Ibrox, to win the league for Rangers at 18, 19. If that happened, you know, say Rico Lewis steps up for Man City to win the league, right? You go, that is a special character. Yeah, yeah. But you because of his, you're right, because of his path, you didn't quite see that going, going that way. Yeah, but he's a winner. Definitely a winner. And um, these are the and, standards. And, he's, and I think that's a good spot because actually his career at Arsenal was it wasn't amazing. Fine. It wasn't amazing. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Number seven. I, I, I went, my jaw dropped. Uh, Editor Finn, if you go back a little bit, you will see. I, I saw this. I hadn't read it. I was like, what's he doing there? But I think I get it. Name me. I won't say the name. <laughs> Nearly yet. said the name. Name me <laughs> the best left footed centre backs in the world right now. Uh... Give me some names. <laughs> Christ. Pal Torres, David Alaba. Josco um, Gavardio. Is Rudiger left footed? No. no. Gabriel Magalhaes. Oh, on, sweet. On form. <laughs> is that third? Yeah. Is it? I don't know. And six or He's not the best in the world. <laughs> He's good. I like him though. Gabriel Magalhaes, to play, and this is so much to do with the system, with the angle, the build-up angles that Arteta wants, the, the channel to be able to allow the football that he plays, to be able to play with that inverted uh, fullback on the left-hand side, you need a left-footed centre-back. The first thing he did at Arsenal was sign Pablo, Pablo Mari. Mm. For what Arteta does, for 30 million, 30, 27 million pounds in 2020, to go and pick out, I would say, certainly, even if you don't think he's, he's better than those players, I happen to think on form, Alaba's out. I don't think Pau Torres is at the level. I think Gavardio has, has, has stuff to prove. Much as I think maybe Gavardio's ceiling is yeah. higher, I think right now Magalhaes is the better player. He is the most underrated player at Arsenal, and I'd put him in the conversation in the league. He, I can't tell you how consistent, how much he's improved. He's he's cut the rashness out of his game. You look at Romero, you know, he just, you know, and maybe again, this, you know, I'm sure Flav would disagree with me, but. You look at the record, it speaks for itself. He's still making the same mistakes. Gabriel cut that out of his game in about 2021, 22. He's been so consistent for 27 million pounds. I, I think, you know, I think Sa there was an offer, there was a rumor, and this is, you know, maybe I shouldn't go off this, but there was a rumor that Saudi wanted for 150 million. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, mean, I uh, you know, and apparently we didn't take that. Yeah. So that tells you who are we getting? Yeah. Who are we going out and getting who can do what we need as a left foot centre back? And right, right away, now. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I guess so. It's about we wondered, rarity of profile. Yeah. yeah. Did we wonder if Timber was going to come in and dislodge? No, I don't think Timber's the the central centre back. I think I think he's one of the fullbacks. I, I I'm fascinated. I I think the thing with Timber is like he's postponed so many conversations about Arsenal. We would have been having, and I sort of gutted a little bit. We would have been having fascinating conversations about Arsenal. Thomas Part Thomas Partey and Urien Timber would both have played for Arsenal this season. The first eleven. That's so two slots are gone. There's nine left. Mm. They haven't played. So who's coming out of the team? And how are we looking in our build up? And how are we looking in, in that conversation? Yeah. So I think that that we we have to we have to look at that. You, you know, and I think Tim is a fantastic player, but I think maybe Gabriel his role changes, but for what he's been so far, as a left foot again, the rarity of the profile at the price, at the time, the development he's done. It's an unbelievable signing. Do you know what? I, I don't think the only name I can think of in terms of someone being as as dominant from an attacking situation with head so is, sorry, yeah, is yeah. John Terry. Like, I don't see anyone else. Like, it's, technically, maybe John Terry's a little bit better. Um, maybe I'm just getting um, wooed by the socks over his knees. But he, he, I mean, I remember watching him. Obviously, a lot of stuff had happened with QPR, and I've never heard an atmosphere like that. And John Terry literally just trotted through the game so calmly like unbelievable on the ball uh, technically but when when Arsenal have a corner he is record like he scores so many goals I think so he's, many goals. since he's come to the league I think he I'm just trying to look that he's up got maybe. 14 I really think that's he has the one in it, ten. such a threat Gary Magalhaes has scored the same number of goals in the Premier League era for Arsenal as Tony Adams now and Tony wow. Adams has played for you know how many years yeah, Tony yeah. Adams played but he's I think since he's been here oh, here we go since he arrived at Arsenal Gabriel Magalhaes has scored the most goals from set pieces excluding penalties of any player in the Premier League I remember just oh, before yeah. Covid we were linked with him so heavily and yeah. then he just oh, yes. went away yes I remember COVID that happened. I remember it was like, that. I remember what could have been 
Uh, right, uh, next two. Go on, let's put the next two together for me because similar eras and yeah. similar... D- well, both defenders. Number six is Lauren Koscielny and number five is Bakary Sanya or B- Sakari Banya. Uh, <laughs> both of these... Uh, both of these... Uh, is there something on the, on how they left? Yes. For both of them? I think both of them... Both high. Both I, high. Yeah, no, I, I, and again, some people will have them lower, but I, for me personally, like... And my number one, I'll explain, you know, this is, you know, I'm looking at all of the parameters, all of the things I mentioned earlier. So, you know, value for money, longevity, all that sort of stuff and putting it all together um, and looking at these and saying, right, these, these are the guys who tick a lot, a lot of boxes. So, yeah, Lon Koscielny signed in 1011 for £4.6 million, made 353 appearances at the club for nine years. The way he left, pulling off the Arsenal shirt, revealing the Bordeaux shirt. It's it's a it's a mistake, <laughs> and also the problem is there was so much bitterness around Arsenal at the, at the time. I think I was projected onto him. Mm. It was like you know, like everyone was anno- one of the few guys you could trust, kind of. Yeah, every, prior to that. everyone's annoyed that the flight's delayed and some guy's making a scene over there, and everyone goes, "Oh, he's the problem." <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He shouldn't have done it, but there's a bigger problem here. Do you know this is a great example. These kind of things happen all the time. When I used to work, when you sort of work in in media and you you know, kind of with these superstars or you know high profile people they'd have people around them and bizarrely despite having loads of people around them everyone's so afraid yeah and and that the shirt thing yeah. that is there's six people around them. they're all thinking probably shouldn't do that yeah oh, <laughs> no one's gonna put their hand yeah, up yeah yeah yeah, yeah this is the afraid. thing it's like yeah you, you think it's because did that and he did do it but that would have passed through a number of hands <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah just absolutely should not have happened but uh, yeah I, I think sanyu and Koscielny very very rarely dropped anything below a, a seven out of ten similar to monreal earlier but i would say at a slightly higher level i think the amount they played for us 284 yeah, appearances and 253 okay. appearances in seven years and nine years sanya went on i don't think he actually won anything for city i was looking that up because i thought I, I was about to say Oh, he went on to win the release. He won a league cup, is that one. it? In right. Was it worth it? 86 it worth it? matches Sunny, he played. Sunny should have won more. But, you know, Sunny and Koscielny can't help. You know, maybe they're... they're if, 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 I, if I could sit here and go, and they won three Premier League titles, everyone goes, yeah, great. They can't help that Van Persie's sold. They can't yeah. help that Fabregas goes to Barcelona. Sign of the times, wasn't it? You know, they're in an era that it's 100% era tax. So I think both of them were brilliant signings. So reliable. Lauren Koscielny, mate. Similar to Ben White, playing with like half a hamstring half the time, really? and just ran for Arsenal. So you know, it's a shame how it ended and leaves a bit of taste. But I think both of those are. Do you know what, and um, Gabriel, and you get a corner. Yeah, mate. Be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Right. Final, so final four. four. Final four. Let's go. Big names here. Big names, and then one name oh. I'm a bit confused by. But I'm, now I'm looking at the stats. I'm going to give maybe. Okay. So number four is Alexis Sanchez. I think he was our second highest transfer fee at the time. So, you know, that that's that's an important caveat. Uh, 108 goals and assists per minute. Made 166 appearances for us and spent three and a half years at the club. Again, we're talking about starts and ends because he left in the way he did. Maybe it leaves a bit of taste. But Sanchez, I think, along with maybe like the Ramsey 13-14 season, along with Aubameyang in, I think it was either 1920 or 2021, whenever he won the golden boot along with Mane and Salah. That peak he had for those couple of years, 16, 17, I've never seen such an explosive player. I've never seen such a player who can literally make you go, it's, it, it, you know, get you out, literally, I could have just said, get you out of your seat. Um, but, you know, that player who you look at and you go, you're going to win this again. And we haven't had that s- since, apart from uh, periods of Aubameyang, but someone who went from the moment they came in to the moment they left, there was not, they didn't necessarily win as the game, but you think, you're going to win as the yes. game. Yes. Well, and add the ability to win a game and the minute, for, the for you. Two FA Cup final goals as well. I would say that at his prime, he is the best player on this list. Yeah. In terms of if you pick the very best moment of Alexis Sanchez in, in that game, let's say like that 3 0 against United at home, that game is, yeah, I think you could, I'd, I'd, I'd argue you're right. I, uh, I think he got, I remember Hugh Wizzy saying this to me and I thought, oh, come on, because he'd gone to Man United and he'd gone, he's finished. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, you're doing that because you're an Arsenal fan and you want it to fail. And he was like, he's been, it was World Cup, um, Copa America, he so World much Cup, Copa, or something like that. It was like, and it was that year where they had to do it back to back or something. And it just killed him. It just did. It did really like, yeah. it was wild how bad he was. I mean, he's, I don't know if he's still playing now. Is it Marseille or he was like, Inter. He, I was, he's yeah, still at Inter. Inter yeah. Oh, right. He, oh, was he going loan or something? Right. Went to Marseille and then went to Inter. Then they gave Marseille a career. 
Okay. He's he, he oh, the yeah, definition yeah. of mercurial in the sense that once you lose that little bit of pace, once you physically drop off, the whole game crumbles. He's a bit but, of Tasmanian devil, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Love so that. explosive. Okay. Weird obsession with his dogs, but anyway, we'll move on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Tavares didn't make it on the list, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <Chat. laughs> top three. I don't know about this. <laughs> don't, wait, don't Google it. Don't Google it. Do oh, not Google God. it. Do not Google it. Okay, top three. Here we go. Off you go, mate. <laughs> Good. Um, number three, I've put William Saliba. Uh, if you signed William Saliba... For two hundred million pounds, <laughs> don't laugh. Okay, you'd be happy. I promise. He is. Be called Everton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he is, changed his name to a club. <laughs> he is going to be the next, the the next Van Dyke. I don't know whether he'll surpass him, but he will be considered in those conversations. He will be in the rear Ferdinand, and I'm 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 happy to say this because I I know whatever happens with Arsenal. He'll go some. He'll go to Madrid. He'll yeah. go. He will go to winning teams and win titles. I've never seen someone at Arsenal in that position with the composure, with the dexterity, with the pace, with the size, with the intelligence, with his passing. He's and he's still twenty two. He's got um. He can, and Arteta was talking about him in a press conference. He was saying he can get better. He can, and he can get better. He can be more dominant. He can be. He can um, step forward out of defence a bit more. He can be a bit more brave with his passing. I think he can deal with aerial stuff a little bit better. So there's there's room to grow for twenty seven million pounds as a pick out, and again from Saint Etienne, he was eighteen years old. In terms of a pick out of talent, and we'll come to another one in a second. In terms of going, you know, getting your scouting network and going right, who's the next best in the world? Uh, the thing was as well with Arsenal, we don't do this very often, or certainly historically we haven't done this very often. Where you know, like the Gabriel Moscardo conversation, or like there's like a you know, um, Yusuf and Makoka, there's always a, a young player who everyone's looking around Europe yeah. and going, that's the guy. He's so hard right now. We're never in those conversations. Mm. Yep. Saliba's the one that we were in. And I, he, I I cannot tell you how good this guy is. He's so good. It's a, it's an odd journey to sort of kind of, yeah. okay, you're in now. Yep. I, I'd love years. to know the truth about that. I, I don't know where I can say the pod, I'll tell you after, but I, I know I, I'm aware that there was a lot of question marks about Saliba, which is, you know, and you do, you have question marks about a young sure. player. So actually mm. for me, you know, the club weren't convinced. I can tell you that. The club weren't convinced about him. So I can say that Saliba has pushed through that three, th I think it was three loan, loan moves, one of which collapsed, by the way, because um, we didn't get the paperwork done in time. So he's gone through all that. Incredible. Yeah. The, absolutely part of his problem is France. If, I want, I want Ferran and if Meccano and so on, whatever, get out of his way, mate, he's going to be the guy. It feels natural for him to take Varane's place. Yeah, totally. And I think that's the thing. Like when you say, to talk about him, you were talking about Odegaard in terms of that leader and how you have to develop into that leader. Yep. Yeah. I think that's the next stage for yep. Saliba. Is that like, I don't think he's ever going to be barking like Van Dyke, no. but like in terms of having Can't that. He's got the world's deepest voice. Has he? Right. But having that, like, the composure, the composure that he's got to then have the confidence to go. I see an opportunity here. Yeah. That's something you don't really think about as a centre back, yeah. but he's got the quality to do yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, top two. See, I would have put your second spot in top. Would you? Yeah. The only reason I haven't done that is because I think this requires a lot of projecting forward. Yeah. Um, and the other one we can say for certainty. I I agree. When all said and done, I think we'll we'll have I will flip these. But for mm. now, I think because of what's I, yeah. What and been... do you know what? Actually, I get why you've done it. So go on, go for it. Mate. My second pick. Uh, for number two is Gabriel Martinelli, signed in 19, 2019 from the fourth division of Brazil. Six million. For six million pounds. It kind of feels like they overspent a little bit. For like When it's the fourth division, you go, you yeah, take two. Yeah, you can have two. No, you know, we want six. You want six. That's six. I was getting a bit annoyed about that. Go on then, have six. 155 appearances for Arsenal. Had some injury issues. Come through it. What's he worth now? I mean, that's I've got to go to transfer market to find that out, um, and I'm looking forward to it because he's he's and worth so much. I mean, in my head, he he's he's a hundred million pound player. But to the right again, it's yeah. a situational to the right. Tommy club. Asses, eighty, to, <laughs> and he is to again situational to the right club. He, I think he is worth a hundred million pounds. You know, to a, a PSG when they're you know, you know eighty five million. It dead. says at the moment. And normally, yeah. transfer market's a little bit conservative. Yeah, yeah, aren't yeah, they? yeah, yeah. Ga Gabriel Martinelli has a bit of that. Ronaldo um, work ethic about him in the sense that 
you know the the stories you hear about him the you know the stuff you know when when we we're all in lockdown and stuff he was posting videos and stuff he just he just he's one of those guys who th probably has fo uh, like a football bed bedspread do you know what i mean he just the jordan henderson the ajax bedspread have yeah. you seen that the what the jordan henderson ajax bedspread oh. sorry about this <laughs> ajax shirt Henderson, really? Ajax is that, is that true yeah, about him fine. selling the most shirt? Is that actually true, or is that Jordan Henderson's agent saying? No, 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 yeah. so <laughs> that's that's um, quite an odd state of um, yeah um, scenario for yeah. for Because also, how would you know that anyway? Um, so yeah, Martin Elite for the for the pick out the the improvement that he uh, uh, literally every aspect of his game has improved. His heading, his finishing, his. Passing his pass completion, his pressing. I could, Will he stay out there? Will he stay out wide, do you think? So, I think another reason that maybe he hasn't... I think people still put him in, you know, maybe not in the best wingers in the Premier League conversation, which I agree with, by the way. I think Martinelli is currently in our front three. How do I word this without an upsetting people? I, in our front three... For, he will stay around the position because I think Saka will come inside and I will have a different type of career. I think Saka's ba not exhausted being a right winger because he's an amazing right winger, but I think Saka will have a different career. I think Martinelli will stay vaguely around that. I think he'll come a little bit further in. I don't think he'll ever go fully as a centre forward. I don't think I could be wrong. Mm. But I think in that position, as far away, how, how much further could he go? He's got the furthest to go in that position. That's a bit right. of a weird point to I make. But, but the, yeah, the, I, I think he's got su such an inc incredible ceiling. I yeah I I I just look at at the moment I think he's a big victim of what what's happened this season with Habits coming in on that side he's played with a number of different left backs there's been a bit of turmoil and stuff and he's receiving if you look at his pass maps and and touch maps he's receiving the ball far too wide when you get him into the right positions last season he overperformed his xg by over 50% yeah that's great that's how good a finisher he, he can be. So when you put him in those positions, you saw it against Crystal Palace. You get him into those positions with a bit of space in behind, he will finish it. Yeah. He will finish it. And it was, uh, sometimes teams play like they're almost on a bit of an axis. Like, I think of it like, so like Vinicius Jr. with Benzema last year. Yeah. Like you can, if you think of like your old school, like 4 4 2, and you've got an advanced forward, yeah. you kind of just, just imagine looking at that, but on a diagonal. Yes. And that's Martinelli a lot of the time. But I think, uh, yeah, I think he's. Uh, he would have been top just because I'm like, where you've got him from, how good he is, how good he could be as well, how much you could sell him for. I get it though. I get the. I get why he put the. Guy we're still in. projecting forward. We're still. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I was going to say as well on that centre forward thing. I think if he had a traditional fullback on the left hand side that allowed him to step out of lane five to lane four, I think I think we're having very different conversations mm. again. My own, my one of the development points. I won't bore you too much about, but at the moment. Saka always or tends to access the box. I'm doing this, see this exclusively on Spotify. Um, tends to access the box almost on the corner of the right hand side where Martinelli goes around the back a lot of the time. Okay. So it closes his angle off. I'd love to see him try and access the box a little bit more where Saka accesses it. I think his lane's a little bit blocked at the minute because of Havertz. But again, it's a, for me, it's about Arteta understanding that what it's like what I said in the Smith Rowe video what is this guy's superpower? What is it? What is he absolutely best at? Get him doing that. And I don't think he does that enough. Yeah. I agree with you. And again, another one, I think I think Martinelli, I think Saliba, I think Odegaard, I think there'll come a point where they'll get pissed off. They get pissed off with not winning. And I think that can be a really good thing. It can be like when you get a little bit fed up with it all, then they'll go up to this next level. Yep. Um, right, first spot. As Lawrence McKenna. Peace. Lawrence McKenna is waiting in the wings to do the podcast that you've already in. listened to. Um, well, no, we're at, we're at number one now, so you can wait okay. one second. <laughs> Come on, number one. Here we go. It's your moment. It's my big moment. <clears throat> uh, Mustafi, no. Aaron Ramsey. <laughs> Aaron Ramsey is, in the my opinion, say, Aaron Ramsey is the greatest. Aaron Ramsey is the greatest footballer of all time. Is that post since the move? <laughs> Shout out to Kim Lake. Since, since the move, move to the Emirates. To the Emirates, and is not. Um, so I think if you look at uh, on my metrics and the way I've done it. When we look at the factors I include, value for money, was it an obvious signing, longevity, influence on the club, opportunity cost, output, trophies, do I like the player, injuries, fitness, mm, hype, personality, timing of signing, all those things, two FA Cup winning goals, 11 seasons at the club, not on crazy wages for £4.8 million, an unbelievable peak season in 13-14 where he was one of the best midfielders in the league in my opinion. So good. Uh, goals and assists numbers are really good 184 for, you know, from that position considering he was often a lot deeper and played in, in a deeper role 
369 appearances for the club. I I just think in every aspect, other than his injuries, um, but I will say on the injury front, Ryan Shawcross broke his leg when he was 18. Do you know, I'll give you it because that is cheap. 4.8. And, and also from Cardiff. You know, again, and again, yeah. I, I, I don't want to overrate like not being obvious, but that's that's not an obvious pick. It's You know, you have to go and look for that. Worst signings ever in the Emirates era. Number five, Kim Kallstrom. Signed with a broken back. Number four, Stefan Licksteiner. Jesus. Number three, Nicola Pepe. Number two, Mustafi. And number one, it's our best mate, William. You're shocked. No, I've got exactly the same. Aside from, I put Runnison in there. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, Runnison. That bloke's got about no. 14 names. Uh, Runar Alex Runar Runison. Yeah. Okay. He's I like checked him in there, there as well. He's on loan from Arsenal at Cardiff. Oh, he must be young. Drops into his goal. Look at his Wikipedia. He's 28. Yeah, he's 28. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's 28. The, the worst and the worst. It's got to be Willian. You put Willian. Do you know it's what? It's got to be Pepe. For the vibes yeah. as well. Because, yeah, mil. yeah, it's a horrendous signing. But the thing with Willian was that I will never forget. There was this interview that came out with Arteta where he said, I want to sign you for three years. One, to qualify for the Champions League. Uh, second one, to play in the Champions League. Third one, to win it. <laughs> did you, you did none of those did it? and none of those came through no, okay. if you enjoy the podcast make sure you check out all the other podcasts they're great as well go check out the different knock if you're an Arsenal fan because if you haven't checked it out you're an idiot speak to you soon